Hi everyone, this is Lisa Cronin from It's the Little Things in Card Making and I am back with the foil quill pens just when you think there's nothing else I figure something else out. So, I thought I would share. I've been playing. I'm making a card. Um, let me start off with the stamps. I had stamped a whole set of stamps just by opening up the back, inking all the stamps, leaving them on their acetate on the plastic, then putting a piece of tissue paper. Now I may forget and call this tracing paper, but this is tissue paper, and I'm working with tissue paper throughout this whole video. So if I say tracing paper, forgive me. Anyway, I'm using the tissue paper, and I laid it down on my inked stamps, then I laid a piece of cardstock, you know, just scrap, and I put it on top of the tissue paper, and I pressed ever so gently to get the ink to transfer from the stamps onto the tissue paper. Okay, so now we've done that. I also have a card base, which I pretty much finished. I used one of the stamps, uh, a couple of the stamps in the set, took them out, put them on a block, and I just went around with the Versamark and heat embossed it with clear um, embossing powder. Then what I did, and I don't know if you can see it, but I put tiny little dots around most of the area. I kind of left this area blank here because I wanted you to see how I did it. So all I do is I drop the paper down, I'm sorry, the foil down, and I just make little dots and I look to see where the dots need to go. Put it down. The longer you stay there, the bigger your dot and the, and the deeper it goes into the paper. So this is one of the things I wanted to wait to show you. And it adds to the card. Very simple. Okay. Let me put a couple here. And all right. So that's pretty much what I did with this card. Um, this is going to be an A2 size card. It is going to have it's going to be a side opening card and it's going to have this image on top and I will probably I'm going to put some um, fun foam underneath it to lift it up because what I also did was I foiled I don't know if you can see I foiled the edges and you really can't see it when it's down flat, but when I lift it up, you can see it a little bit better. Anyway, so I took these, these stamped images that's on the tissue paper, and what I did was I foiled the mouse. And you're saying, but wait a minute, wait a minute. The mouse is looking that way. The stamp is looking that way. Guess what, everybody? If you use tissue paper, you have the reversed image on the other side of the tissue paper. How cool is that? I think that's pretty cool. Not for nothing. I think it's great. So, the mouse can look that way. Or, the mouse can look this way. It depends. It depends on how he's feeling, what he wants to do. Then I... Also, um, put a couple of these little loose dandelion pieces. So, he's already blown away, some of them. He's making his wish. Okay. The other thing I wanted to show you is, I'm calling it reverse foil, reverse foiling. And I'm going to have him sit on this mushroom here. Now... I'm, sh I'm sure you could see it because I kind of used darker cardstock so you could see it. 
but you can see through the tissue paper, which is another plus. So I can see the mouse. I can see exactly where he is. And I want to position him on this mushroom. Can you see him? That's his body right here. So I want to position him on the mushroom. Um, and it's just like stamping. You know, there's an order when you're doing any kind of masking or if you're doing foregrounds and backgrounds. The images that you want on top of something or in front of something are the ones that you stamp first. And this is the same principle. So the mouse is going to be on top of the mushroom. So I had to get the mouse down first. Now I can deal with the mushroom. Okay, so I'm going to make sure that he's sitting there nicely. And if you notice, I'm not using any hinges. And that's because I'm only doing like one image and it should be simple enough. So I'm going to take my red pencil and I went out and I bought Crayola colored pencils just for this purpose. Okay, I want them to kind of be in the middle, but I don't want the mushroom to be on too much on one side or another. So I'm positioning him at the mushroom underneath him. And, and I think that's good. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to outline him. I'm going to outline him so I do not foil him. Okay. And that's all I had to do. Now I have to make sure that I leave my foil and my tracing paper in the exact same spot it's in now. And I'm going to turn to do my foiling because it's more comfortable on an angle for me. And I am just going to start foiling. And I know not to foil in here because that's what I marked off. So I'm going to actually I think I'm going to do this part in the second largest, no, the second smallest pen, the one up from the smallest pen. And I'm just going to trace around, I'm not pushing too hard because I really don't have to use tissue paper. The heat penetrates onto the foil very easily. So I'm just trying to see where I'm going. Not pushing too hard. And oh, I don't think I did. I don't think I did this line here. Now, I found that outlining these little circles doesn't look so good, so I'm just going to fill them in. I'm still, you know, going by the shape of the stamp, but I'm just filling them in. I just think it looks better. And this is going to be a birthday card. I'm not going to do this little piece down here. Well, maybe I will, but I'll bring it down a little bit more. And I'm going to do part of this one. I'm just going to make a thicker line here. Now I'm going to take my smaller nib and I'm just going to make the mushroom lines on the bottom.
and I'm going to do the trunk of the mushroom. Is that what you call the bottom of a mushroom? The trunk and the grass. And I'm outlining, just outlining. in a couple of the little details and let's see what we got so we're gonna peek I think I'm going to make this area right here a little thicker and I'm just going to do that by just okay I'm going to say we're ready oh we did good we did really good can you see that? Sitting on top of that mushroom. I only see like one little mistake that I have to correct. And that is that the mushroom is not is not continuing on underneath his leg. So because we can see through um, the tissue paper, I'm going to realign it. I can see where that mushroom is and this is the part right here that I need to put in. So I'm just going to and let's see Did it line up lined up kind of a little short there let's bring it back let's line it up Just a little bit. Okay, that should be good enough. Hmm, I went right over that same mark. Okay, let's see if we could do it better. I'm just going to move the paper over slightly. great but it will do now if you notice here the lines that I made to give it kind of like a shadow they're kind of going up on the, mu the mushroom top and I don't like that so I'm going to erase those little marks with my sand eraser and I'm just going to just very lightly erase it and it's still there so I'm going to gently go again so you can erase if you don't press too hard you can erase on cardstock and that's much better I could try to erase this line, but I don't think I'm going to do that. Who says a mushroom has to be perfectly round? 
Okay, so that's my mushroom. And this is so cute. Isn't this cute? What are we up to now? I gotta look at the time. 15 minutes. Alrighty. So now I'm going to take my image and I'm going to mount it with some glue. Like I said, with some glue. Seriously? Why is it you think you have everything? And I do. Alright, so I'm just going to take him now. And I am going to mount him. On another piece. Another shape. I wanted to double it up. And I know it's here somewhere. Here it is. I'm just going to marry these two pieces. And now you can see that silver on the side just a little better. See that? Now I'm going to get my card base. And that should be here somewhere. I did have it. Here it is. The first thing I want to do is fold the card. I'm going to turn it over and score it. Burnish it. So there's a couple more things that I figured out. But I can't put them all in one video because then we'd be here all day. And you have things you have to do. So I'm going to take, I already cut my, my fun foam. And this will um, let that silver show a little better. I mean, it's not in your face, but, you know, somebody looks at the side, it, it does look a little more finished. And I'm just going to center it. Now, I'm going to place it in the center. going to color him and I'm I still don't know if I'm going to do that but basically this video was to show you the reverse foiling when you use tissue paper the reverse masking when you use tissue paper and um, that's it 18 minutes not too bad okay this is Lisa Cronin from It's the Little Things in Card Making, and I want to say thank you very much. We we hit a milestone, a hundred subscribers. Very cool. You have no idea how happy I am. I am just elated. I'm hoping that my videos are helpful, and if you enjoy my videos, please give it a thum thumbs up, share, subscribe, comment. I'll be happy to answer any questions you may have. Again, thank you for spending your time with me. I hope I was helpful. I hope in, I inspired you to try your foil quill pens. Be patient. Don't give up. Don't give up. Don't give up. Um, practice, practice, practice. Until next time. Stay well. Thank you again. Bye now.